today for discussion we have two experts dr binoy goel he is assistant professor in neurology at all india institute of medical sciences he has been involved in our program sanjay patnaik presently a consultant in psychiatry at bhimans in this session we will discuss about approach to a patient with behavioral disorders so when you see a patient who complains of some behavioral problem how to go about it uh, that component we will discuss in this session in detail i will request now dr sanjay patnaik to tell us that how a student of our uh, pg dgm will approach to a patient with behavioral problems let's say ki i am a psychiatrist just because i am a psychiatrist i don't have to go about telling people that look you are ill and you need treatment you know the, the key thing we should realize that there has to be two d's one is distress and dysfunction that is the thing which brings the patient to the doctor either he comes himself or brought by the family members or by brought by police or somebody stress or and dysfunction two are the main keys to start with so if there is distress or the family either the patient is distressed or or the family member and there is dysfunction so we start with the patient comes to you or brought by the family member or by police to start with the information the information can come from the patient himself or his relatives or the old documents uh, like let's say he has in the past the um, uh, patient has this particular illness or some other illness in the past so we have some records so then we come to sometimes we have to write um, say whether this information is adequate to make a diagnosis it might not be actually so we might to put down on record this at this moment this patient the information is inadequate but we have to gather information in the uh, future to make a diagnosis or and we can also the reliability also is a question sometimes uh, there are patients who might uh, or um, some alter motives so might come up with uh, a fan illness so we have to uh, in interview that patient or gather information in related in different times and with different per persons to corroborate uh, the history so, so basically you want to rule out whether it is a fanning or it is a absolutely problem. absolutely yeah. absolutely so i can uh, if i have the only the patient i can uh, discuss with the patient yes. over a period of time in different settings or i corroborate with his relatives police or old records after i have this information then i have to um, in details then i have to talk to the patient himself so we call that uh, mental stat examination basically mental status examination msc so in that we start with the patient when he comes to the interview room and then we call it appearance and behavior we can see the patient is whether he is looking good he is well groomed well kempt or he is ill groomed ill kempt how he whether he is making an eye contact or not whether how he walks whether he is walking slow fast how whether he is scanning the room he is very suspicious the way he looks whether he is uh, whether he is depressed if somebody is depressed that means he will feel sad if somebody is suspicious he will be suspicious he will be fearful he will be scanning the room <coughs> those kind of things should uh, put down on paper because everything has a meaning and all these records will be needed in future because most of these psychiatric illnesses are chronic or episodic which tend to repeat over a period of time and after we have put down on paper that this is appearance and behavior we go back to rapo rapo that is a connection between the patient and the uh, doctor it has three components one we call communication that means if patient is communicative whatever you want to say or whatever answering the question second is trust whether there is a trust from the patient side to the uh, for the doctor and third is we call it empathy empathy is basically it's a technical term we mean this means the pes whether the doctor can empathize with the patient that means being in his shoes if he is said whether can the patient doc doctor feel the, uh, how distressed that patient is basically so they could if all the three criteria are fulfilled we call rapo established that is trust communication and empathy and we can also put down the like some if somebody is suspicious naturally well, he won't trust you maybe he not com communicate with you properly he might be aggressive so then naturally well, we put down <coughs> rapo not established then we come to speech how if he makes a communicate if he communicates then we have to know whether how he talks whether he is uh, uh, you can uh, whether it is relevant which is coherent or goal directed according to the questions you ask them 
then we call then speech whether it is in tone whether there is modulation in voice those kind of things like we have we are discussing about parkinson's disease it will be slow so there will be no modulation of voice he will be speaking in a particular tone he will be speaking uh, without alteration in tone or pitch monotonous kind monotonous of voice absolutely so uh, then we call it mood mood is basically how the patient feels from inside generally when a psychiatrist or a doctor asks how is your mood these days basically it's not the particular time how he has been over a period of time how he feels from within we call it mood or effect so if the patient is uh, sometimes it might different from a particular point of the patient might be telling you something else and you might feel something else like somebody might be suspicious he's he's irritable he's uh, he, he might be lying to you also sometimes so we call it objective and subjective how, how what the patient feels and what i feel let's say somebody if somebody is depressed he might say our oh, doctor i don't i'm not feeling all right so we put down in that quote on quote in, in his words and we in my word i might say he looks depressed then we come to thought you know if somebody is speaking it's very speech uh, it also reflects how do you feel uh, regarding your thoughts thoughts actually we hear this delusions normally we do talk about delusions this comes here only there we talk about flow form of thoughts content of thoughts like whether is speaking flow uh, fast slow and what kind of content the content means here is, we call it delusions delusion is when we call talk about psychotic symptoms or depressed symptoms depressive patients will be talking about depressive cognition like these days i don't feel like doing anything i don't enjoy things i am helpless i feel helpless i am hopeless about the future those things feature here and also like the delusions will be these are the unshakable false belief somebody believes that a particular ex let's say his father wants to kill me and he believes it despite being convinced despite being uh, told otherwise that everybody else thinks that he is not actually his father is a very nice guy even the family members believe so but he believes that he actually his father is uh conspiring against him so these are the things which we are talking about in the in the beginning like that documentation whether this is reliable or adequate reliability of the uh, information a patient tells you and everybody else also convinces you to look actually actually somebody his father is planning against him then maybe of course then the reliability part comes otherwise if everybody we generally trust the family everybody says ki no it's not true but the patient believes so then we put him in the diligence that means diligence of reference or persecution that way then of course then comes the higher cognitive functions like whether his patient is oriented to time present person whether he is recent intact uh, rec memories like immediate recent and remote memory intact or not other things like abstraction then lastly we talk about insight insight is very important insight we, that means degree of awareness about the illness degree means it has to be in a step by which will be 1 to 6 degree of awareness in some in psychiatric illness there will be patients who might not believe that they are ill especially we call it psychotic there is lost loss of touch with reality so they don't they don't believe that they are ill so that case we call that one insight that means um, no insight it's he doesn't believe that he is ill whether it is his family members the society as the doctor we feel that he is ill so we call it the graded insight one and six is the total insight that he believes that he is suffering from a particular il mental illness which needs medicine and he complies to the medication so dr patai yeah. we will interrupt here this so, insight is a very important symptom uh, important uh, yeah important in this sense of that that is the so we have to treat the patient so that his insight improves that means so does it help to differentiate whether this is a psychosis or a Uh, on non psychotic disorder absolutely 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 mm. absolutely something like that patient is suffering from depression yes he definitely believes yes. that doctor yes i am ill, Ill. Uh, whether he, maybe he would he, he doesn't believe that he is uh, mentally ill he yes. might tell you that okay i am no so doctor i don't suffer from any mental yes. illness but i am suffering from some illness yes. because of which i am lethargic yes. i i feel tired i don't feel like doing my day to day activities i don't enjoy watching tv those things i am not able to concentrate definitely i am ill and i need medication yes. i need some kind of therapy either it counseling uh, psychotherapy or medication Be he believes this is ill mm. that means that means it's not no in no inside it's something yes. like it's in between 3 uh, to 5 inside graded inside 
he, somebody might be actually tell you, Dr. Yes. I am suffering from depression or I am suffering from schizophrenia. There yes. might be psychotic symptoms, a patient suffering from schizophrenia improves, now he is taking medicines regularly. They can have insight. Absolutely, they can have insight. At the beginning, definitely he won't have. Absolutely. So, when we, then we make a diagnosis. If we like, we have information from the patient, from the relatives, then we interview the um, uh, patient that is called mental MSc, mental status examination. Over a period of time, we have a if conclusion. We then we do the higher mental functions inside. Then we come to a conclusion whether the patient is suffering from some kind of illness or not. Then what happens? Sometimes we might not actually at the first interview we might not come up with some kind of conclusion. So we make a DD, the differential diagnosis. It can be okay. This is a schizophrenia or maybe bipolar or psychotic symptoms, something else, you know, or malingering, for example. But you have to everybody has to understand as a doctor, as a physician, if you, there are hierarchy of uh, to point uh, to make a diagnosis. Like every time the first thing comes uh, organicity, as we were talking about, let's say Parkinson's disease. Somebody having psychosis can have a and somebody having Parkinson's disease. The same guy Parkinson with Parkinson's disease having psychosis. We have to first rule out whether this psychosis is because of Parkinson's disease or not. First organicity that is some uh, organic neurological illness. Then comes psychotic illness like schizophrenia or acute transient psychotic disorder. Then comes bipolar then mood disorders, bipolar disorder or depression. Then comes anxiety disorder. Lastly, other neuro anxiety uh, like malingering or fanning. You know. So, we have to uh, make sure that we rule out the upper uh, diagnosis before you go for the second one. And of course, there will be many investigations also to make uh, when we diagnose. So, one has to follow the sequence. Absolutely, absolutely. First we have to rule out the organic absolutely, disorders absolutely. and then he has to rule out psychotic yes. disorders. And then look for Absolutely. So, absolutely. so the fanning comes the end. Uh, this, that means we have to trust the patient. Okay. Absolutely. Even Fine. if he is fanning, we have to make sure that he is not he is not having some other problem. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. So basically, yeah. a psychotic disorder which looks like a psychotic could have an associated organic disease. Yeah, absolutely. And which may mimic like a psychotic disorder for, a, uh, for at the time of presentation. Absolutely, so absolutely. We have to be very cautious and thinking that is there any other disease behind the scene which could mimic like this disease. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Something like we were discussing about maybe in later part of this session we will be talking about the dementia or other illnesses yes. like uh, for example cerebrovascular accidents, <coughs> dementia like Parkinson's disease, all these neurological illnesses will um, uh, have a some psychiatric comp components. Okay. It can be psychosis, yes. it can be depression. So, do please do not forget that we have to treat the root cause of the illness that is dementia, severe or the, of course, we can add Simple symptomatically other yes. uh, medications. That is, the, that is the primary and that will be a blunder, that will be a blunder if you miss organicity. That is a blunder. So, after we um, start, uh, then we investigate definitely to rule out other illnesses, some comorbid psychiatric illnesses. As we, uh, let me emphasize few things here. As here we are talking about uh, mostly focusing on geriatric population. So, the in geriatric population, the symptomatology, the presentation differs from the normal adult population that you have to understand. The for example, depression is the one of the commonest illness in psychiatry. It is so common that actually we call it uh, the common cold in psychiatric disorder. It is that common, you know. So, uh, we can talk about depression in fact, there is the common and uh, another reason to why you should talk about depression because this depression is a word which is very loosely used, abused in fact. Everybody, even some, somebody suffering from mania, actually bipolar or schizophrenia comes and tells kid doctor, I think my brother is suffering from depression, you know. So, do not go by the word depression. When every, anybody who comes with complaints or I am suffering from depression or my father is suffering from depression, please ask what do they mean by depression, you know. Unless of course, unless you know then you can't uh, make sure to which, which is depression. So, there are a few th three things at least. One sustained sadness of mood over a period of time that means over the period of more than two weeks. There is the key <coughs> sustained sadness of mood feels low most of the time. Second thing is physical symptom that is weakness or easy fatigability that is the key. These days he is not able to work from, uh, he feels uh, he hypermetallizes, you know, he disnick after a few um, kilometers of walk or few meters of walking or after day to day course. The third thing we call anhedonia that is lack of pleasure 
from the usually pleasurable activities. Like I used to watch TV. I love movies. I love Amitabh Bachchan movies. So now I don't even like watching Bachchan movie. That means there is something wrong with it. Similar. So th one of these three things has to be there to make diagnosis of depression: anhedonia, <coughs> easy fatigability or um, weakness, and the most importantly, sustained sadness of mood. But here the problem. In Any specific duration? Yeah, absolutely. They have to be present for uh, at least two weeks of time or um, it is so severe that patient needing admission. Within one week patient has so much so depressive symptoms needing admission because of which maybe he stopped taking yes. food. The key symptoms, the geriatric population is normally they do not complain of sustained sadness of mood. That is the problem. So, the mostly they will complain about somatic complaints like Dr. Sir, I am getting tired easily. Yes. There is headache, there is body ache, everywhere pain, you know, not ab able to have good night sleep, frequent to waking up, not able to initiate <coughs> sleep, those kind of things. So not the diet feature may not be there, we have to intervene to absolutely, absolutely, the absolutely. Activity. If we go for the, the first symptom, as I already said, ki sustained sadness of mood, actually in genetic population, they won't come up with it. Yes, they no, say I am sad. Oh, yes. Yes. They won't say. So, anytime in neurology OPD, you see patients in complain of physical illness, like I you have to think about me as well. Another thing that is very important for geriatric persons because any time when geriatric uh, old person comes, na, he most often than not he might have as a physical illness as well. More than chance, 65 percent of chance that he is having another comorbid psychiatric or sorry physical illness. It can be arthritis, it can be diabetes, it can be cerebral vascular, it can be dementia, something. Generally, till now, we always emphasize on the physical problem, and that's the problem because of which we do not, we under diagnose depression. Which means, uh, somebody presents to Dr. Goel with all the problems of dementia or Parkinson disease as well as some symptoms of depression. He, he treats only dementia or uh, physical element, element without thinking that he might be actually depressed, yes. that becomes a problem. And uh, unfortunately, uh, first thing we are not uh, diagnosing it, it is under diagnosed. Second thing, we are giving more importance to the physical element, but the patient, the patient as he started with the two D's, distress and dysfunction, you will be surprised to know the patients are much more distress and much more dysfunction because of this depression rather than the physical element. And in case of when you talk about that, that means to, uh, for assessment, then we come about, come to treatment and treatment of course, we have uh, basically two kind of, one is pharmacological um, treatment. Pharmacotherapy. Uh, maybe I will interrupt you here. Yeah. Uh, because uh, psychiatric disorders are one which are uh, not only it affects the patients, but Absolutely. also affects the family. Absolutely. So, uh, how do you grade the role of family members in the uh, psychiatric disorders? Absolutely. 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 Think that in treatment, when you are talking about treatment, the treatment comes in first thing, we are talking about uh, medications. Uh, before medication, in fact, we talk about educating the family member and yes. the patient about the nature of the illness. Yes and the medication, the yes. prognosis, the outcome of the uh, illness. Yes. There are, for example, simple things like somebody suffering from Parkinson's disease and depression. You can't tell the patient that look within few days or few weeks you will be perfectly, you will be cured, you know. Everybody wants to hear that word cured. Dr. Sir, mm -hmm. will I be cured with this medicine, you know. That is the thing. Sometimes we can, we can lie, you can push, oh, it's, you know. It is better to tell from the front. Is being honest is the best thing because at the late end of the day he will be having this illness for the rest of his life. So it's better to tell the family member, educate the family member. And here the role comes to, as you said, the caregivers actually. Yes. The burden of the caregivers, how he how he or she copes with this kind of illness, this burden, you know. Yes. Of course, definitely. In uh, Western countries mm -hmm. there are uh, old age homes, nursing homes. Unfortunately, we do not have those. It is a good part in one way yes. because we have family support. Yes. But, uh, but the kind of trends we are having now, the pattern of change uh, with uh, metros, absolutely families. more nuclear families, the, the old, pers old persons are uh, staying alone. Yes. That is the problem. So, we, when we, 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 can fin we can talk about uh, this uh, caregiver now also, you know, we call it uh, how to cope with this kind of problems, some kind we call it uh, coping strategies, you know. Yes. There are positive as well as negative coping strategies. Ne positive means like somebody uh, distraction, we call positive distraction. So, now that I am worried that my father is suffering from dementia or things, so I have to know that is it dementia, this can be treated to a certain extent, it has to be there for some time. 
so how to how I can cope either I can uh, distract myself positive distance like I can go for a study go for studies go for jogging go for exercise and yoga to take care of it somebody else might go for negative distractions like go for drugs alcohol other things there will be sometimes we call it religion I can go for spiritualism that helps actually trust me that is the very key for our country go for religion that yes. helps spiritualism sometimes we problem solving that is very important that is another kind of coping problem solving I know that this is an illness this can be taken care of we have to go for a pill or two pill or ten pills I have there will be few th other things like physiotherapy and other things to be taken care of so I have to solve the problem so I feel less burden less distress if I know about the illness and I do something about it this is we call problem solving this is a positive way of coping somebody might be uh, blame we call it denial or blaming I might blame my father look because of whatever reason you are ill and uh, because, all of the you time. because you I'm sick I'm yes. uh, yeah, absolutely I'm yes. you know? because, absolutely. Of, because of uh, you whatever right? and uh, these are negative uh, coping strategies and definitely because of which just by blaming you won't be fine you know if somebody tells me because of this I am ill <coughs> or some <coughs> sick and by blaming makes me good I won't believe it then we could something like that they so we can some by summarize we can say the positive uh, way of coping will be positive distraction uh, like problem solving turning into religion social support that's this that's very important actually social support that's a good part about our society till that unless we turn westwards okay, that we have good social support till now uh, but it's eroding of course it's eroding so that's where the place uh, role of comes of society caregivers role. absolutely there comes the society because role the society has to accept these people as a as, a, as, as, as people absolutely as people. Absolutely, people they should not be discarded from the society absolutely they should be given respect and absolutely love. absolutely that's that's because it's a more of a vicious cycle somebody absolutely. suffers from psychotic disorder he is uh, thrown out thrown of out the society of it worsens his problem. Absolutely, he is involved as a part of society. Yeah, absolutely. Without solving the problem, actually, you are worsening it. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. You know, uh, I can quote something here. As we are talking, a pill helps. Similarly, a old person is not ill just because he is old, because he is sick. That's that's the bottom line. So, if somebody is sick just uh, at seventy, doesn't mean that he is uh, ill because of his seventy, because he has some problem. So, after we diagnose and of the treatment we come to th therapy where treatment will be pharmacotherapy pharmacotherapy there will be 100 medication 100 over the period of time less last 50 years like in the, the first 1950 we started having the first medication pharmacotherapy that medicine come clopromazine after that there are so many medicines antidepressants mood stabilizers everything has come up and over the 30 last 30 years we have come up with newer medicines to take care of the illnesses with better uh, specific receptor uh, affinity with less side effects less less drug <coughs> interaction those kind of things so if we first we have to diagnose the patient second we have to educate the family member and the um, patient third thing we have to investigate make sure that he is not suffering from some other illness fourth we have to give him some we have to choose medicine always for old patients we have to choose medicines which are safer and we have to start in a very low dose and gradually go up that means start low and go slowly fourth thing we have to educate them about the negative side, side effect of the medications as well then of course comes the psychotherapy or counseling we call it that. psychotherapy can be structured you know it can be supportive psychotherapy cognitive behavioral therapy or even coping even coping strategies for the family as well as the patient mostly we can talk about uh, you know uh, depression we till now I was mostly focusing on depression we can focus on other illnesses as well the key thing please do not forget one thing whatever the patient says if he says I am I am really sad or I don't see my future I can't see my future that's why I'm suicidal I it's better to kill myself it's uh, it's because he feels that way that's the key whatever the patient feels actually he if for him it's the truth he can't see anything else there comes suicide you know we call it hopelessness there is no f future in uh, me kind of thing. and the here the tricky part is the uh, there is higher chance of suicide in geriatric population like uh, more uh, chance of completed suicide maybe in young or adult population they might uh, 
uh, attempt suicides more f often, but the completed suicides are much more common in adult population, sorry, old population. There we have to, yeah. Can you explain this terminology? Yeah, completed sometimes suicide. the completed, sometimes yeah. I might, uh, you know, I might take a few pills of uh, alprazolam, digipam. We know that uh, it won't be, uh, I won't, won't to, it won't kill me. Maybe it's just to, it's made of a manipulative behavior or may, actually that time I was feeling depressed, so I pop up few pills, yes. actually. Maybe if I'm saved, maybe I won't uh, I do it again. Basically. Absolutely, I won't do it But in case of dip, uh, depression or in uh, old, peop, old uh, population, genetic population, they complete suicide. They make sure that actually it happens. Absolutely. That's why we have to make sure what that it happens. What are the chances in younger patients that mm -hmm. once they attempt in suicide, yeah. that they will attempt it again? Yeah, yeah. Of course, that's there are few risks of suicide. Like if somebody attempts suicide, uh, even if sometimes we might think that ah, it's a manipulative behavior, but then he actually he might complete it. Actually, it might be even accidental. Yes. He might uh, complete it. And the chance of <coughs> repeatedly attempting it is around more than 30 percent. Okay. So that means even if somebody telling you, even uh, I feel like killing myself, please ig don't ignore it. Yes. It's, it take might it be actually taken seriously. Yes. My, I definitely, that you know, over the period of time it has been seen that most of the people who complete suicide are mostly ill actually. It might be impulsive, very few, but mostly highlighted the in media or other things. Actually, most of the people are actually sick. If you know somebody who is talking about uh, contemplating suicide, then please inform his or her relatives and take uh, um, uh, proper opinion from a psychiatrist or physician. Another thing is uh, sometimes the patients who are markedly depressed, hmm. but they have not thought of uh, committing suicide till now. Hmm. When the psychiatrist talk to him that uh, do you feel depressed <coughs> that you want to commit suicide hmm. or have you thought of committing suicide, hmm. does talking to the patient about suicide increase the incidence of suicide? Oh, this, this is another myth. Of course, it, it does not. Please, this does not. So, next time you see any depressed, of course, you, you cannot ask that question bluntly. So, you have to start build up a rapport and hmm. asking like you start with how you feeling these days, how, how is your mood these days. Yes. How is your appetite? How is your food? Then, then you, after talking some um, time to the patient, you know that okay, actually he is severe. Yes. He is crying most of the time. Yes. He is not taking food. He is not yes. going out. He has stopped uh, interacting with family members. Then you can ask, do you feel that this life is not worth living? Yes. Without adding this word, then you know, if you want yes, to right. kill yourself. Yes. So he will himself will <coughs> come up with this. Uh, you know, also for the last few days, I feel so low. It's sometimes I feel it's better to die. Yeah. You know that we call that uh, death wish. That means he's not doing it actively. He's not doing anything actively, he's but he he is willing to. You know, it's better if something happens, I die. I, I won't complain. That kind yes. of thing. The next step comes actively participating. That is called suicide. After yes. some time, maybe if you don't intervene, then after some time, actually he might do something. Because there is a common belief that when you talk to the patients about suicide, he may commit suicide. Ah, uh, that's but that's that a wrong actually myth. Absolutely, that, that's absolutely a absolutely myth. myth. It's a big big myth. So any time you say depressed patient gradually over a period of time ask him do you really feel the life is not worth living yes. before you ask for suicide huh? so if he comes up with ideal is he will definitely anybody who is mostly suicidal most often they not they will come up with it if sometimes my patient might laugh at actually <laughs> no 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 i'm not that depressed but i'm depressed you know? yes. sometimes it's better always to ask patients look uh, mr sanjay you know ki i am going to ask you few questions I used to or we used to ask to most of the people. Yes. Some might seem very funny, very yes. crazy, you know, irrational, but they happen. Yes. So if that happens to you, please say me yes or yes. no. That helps. That doesn't uh, offend the patient and you get the cue that what to do. So Close I think these are the practical tips. Yes. But how tips, to approach absolutely. a patient. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Talking uh, to the patient. Yeah. Absolutely. So even that talking style and uh, absolutely. 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 putting the question in a proper absolutely. perspective. Absolutely. You know, you know that now he is not mildly but moderately ill. Now it's going to severity. So okay. You know, uh, something I can, uh, if I can quote, and you know, if I take one minute, I just like this medicine, Dr. Sir, I think uh, I have come, I am, uh, he's an old patient, now he's in episodic illness, he's having a depression for the past many years, he's doing perfectly fine for the last couple of years, now he comes after some time, say, okay. so how come you are here, Dr. Sir, I am depressed, mm -hmm. I am depressed, I stopped the medication after, uh, without, sorry, I'm, uh, without consulting you, so now I am depressed for some time, I have stopped going to my work for the last couple of days, I thought yeah, it's better to meet you now. Yes. Uh, then I asked, okay, uh, just like you said, you know, I, over the period of time I asked, how do you feel these days? Do you feel like the, my life is not worth living? 
can you explain it? this patient he himself comes to you you know doctor last night i thought that yes i thought of actually killing my whole family and then killing myself without asking that question i m might have actually uh, m uh, left that patient you know he might have done actually uh, something yes. he might have killed himself this patient might have a might thought of suicide absolutely. in the absolutely. mind and they may not tell you absolutely they might not so tell you always interrogate and find out whether they have absolutely. these ideas in this absolutely mind. Sometimes, if you have a rapport, they when if you they you know if you have a um, communication trust, definitely most often they not the patient will come up with this idea. So you know, sometimes even I you know I um, wanted to do that. Yes. I went to that uh, train line, but, but I remembered about my kids. I came back. Yes. That's the you know there are a few symptoms. Okay, I, we can if I are talking about suicide, we can talk about few things like when we call hopelessness. That means I see no future in front of me. I can also say, you know, doctor. Even if I trust me, if I I will be depressed and I am severely depressed, I can take tell doctor Goel, look, doctor Goel, I treat depression. You know, there are people who suffer from depression become perfectly all right, but I won't be. I know for sure that even if you do whatever, I won't be all right. Yes. There is no future. Yes. So that is I am ill actually. So even if I am a doctor, I know about depression, but when I myself is depressed at that time. I don't, mm, I don't see any future, and so that's illness, you know. Just like you can't control chicken rigor in malaria, <laughs> so you can't uh, control this kind of depressive thoughts in depression. So there will be people, of course. There will be people who can do stuff, you know. I am, uh, this just I am very much tense. Maybe because I'm tense, I am depressed. Is the other way around. Please make sure he is depressed that's because of which he is tense. There's, 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 there's so many myths actually, you know. And uh, one, is one is hopelessness. There are other things. One people might actually uh, finish many tasks. You know, there are there are people who will uh, who have borrowed money or borrowed books. He will give money to everybody. His books, basically finishing tasks, mm -hmm. making wills. Then you realize, you know, he is doing something. He is he's he's planning not. something. Something, mm -hmm. planning something big. Actually, which is stupid, yes. my man. But actually, he is something doing something. So we have to be alert. And once even uh, writing will, writing a uh, suicidal note, please don't ignore it. There will be. Uh, I have seen many people who it did it, and uh, they end up uh, losing their family member, very close ones. So treatment is also keeping an eyes and ears open. You know, the patient comes in, you see it, you ask, talk to him, you <coughs> gather information from the family members' records, investigate, rule out the other higher illnesses like gun illnesses. Uh, treat him. Treat mean treatment means also educating the family member and the patient about the illness, about the prognosis, outcome of the illness, about the medications. Always, please, always give them options. You know, you can always tell them. Look, there are many options. Like, um, uh, for example, like Dr. Gold told you. So, okay, any kind of it can be even uh, um, uh, Parkinson's disease. Always give them options. Look, I will be the best way to treat is give dopa, carbidopa. There are other options all available, but over the period of time, this works good, this does not work. So, always the sense of control is always with the patient, and that helps actually. So that give, give, give them a security that this is going absolutely, to definitely absolutely help that will help them, and that builds out trust in you also. Yes. No, this doctor does not did not impose his views on me. Yes, you know, he gave me options. He convinced about it. Absolutely, right. absolutely. Then he said, oh, sir, I, if you think that this is good, do that. I'll go to it. Yes. Even if uh, there is some side effects, uh, like for example, I give antidepressant, there will have some side effects, mild yes. side effects, like maybe sedation, maybe <coughs> constipation, maybe dryness of mouth. But if you tell the patients from the very beginning. He realizes that okay, these are there. So the first thing is that my depression should be taken care of. I can take care of these side uh, effects by taking maybe use of gold for constipation or <laughs> you know for long for uh, dryness of mouth. Yes. That helps. Yes. Yes, any day that helps. You are talking about investigation. There is always a craze of investigating the patients. Yeah. What is hmm. the role of imaging uh, in a psychiatric disorders? Because somebody comes to any behavior, somebody wants to do CT scan, somebody hmm. wants to do MRI. So where do you really put the use of these investigation in the management of psychiatric disorders? Yeah. Uh, or a good quality of history and examination is good enough to really diagnose. Good quality of history and examination takes care of the diagnosis part of yes. psychiatric illness. Yes. There is no role as, as far as the imaging part comes. Yes. But imaging comes to rule out some organic illnesses, more severe form of illnesses which can yes. be taken care of. If there is a psychiatric disorder and we suspect an organic disease associated, but I would feel there would be some clue in the clinical history examination absolutely. that will tell you that this is odd in this disease. Absolutely, so absolutely. So we should investigate for organic disease. Absolutely, absolutely. Rather than as a blanket statement 
that all the psychiatric disorders need investigation no. to rule no, out no, organic no, disease. No, 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 no. That, that will be actually working from the spinal level. Yes. No, that will be, of course. There will be <coughs> clues, simply like uh, more side effects. Yes. Even with low doses, there will be side effects. Yes. There is, we have to think that there is something underneath. Yes. Something, we were, we were treating the patient adequate doses, good medication, responding in the past, very, very now he is not responding. Disease. Absolutely. The ultra sensory sensor incontinence of urine. Incontinence, like, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Okay, patient can injures himself. Absolutely. These are clues in the history that will tell you that there could be associated organic disease. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Like, if you already spent out loss of consciousness. Okay, there is a big difference between unresponsive spells, we, yes. we used to call it hysteria or now dissociative spells, then loss of loss consciousness. Of consciousness. Yes. Absolutely. Loss of consciousness, <coughs> tongue bite, uh, uh, incontinence. That's if there is incontinence, make sure that he is organically ill. We you come to the first for. neurology. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. You have to investigate. There is other films like hypothyroidism. Uh, thyroid problem is a very commonly associated with uh, depression. Uh, depression. Yes. So you have to make sure that anybody having depression in old age, make sure that you rule out you few rule things. Out At least thyroid hormone yes. uh, element has to be taken care of. Uh, can you just summarize? Now we have discussed in detail, just yeah. in a systematic way, so that yeah. a student can approach a patient. Yeah. that uh, in the history what are the important points first thing if just <coughs> ten time, again start with this. just because i am a psychiatrist or you a doctor don't make you uh, an important person that you go and diagnose people there has to be distress or dysfunction two things two days then comes how patient comes to you there will be information it can be verbal it can be written it can be other documents it can be from the patients or from the relatives or family members then comes examining the patient please do a thorough examination physically just like Dr. Goyal already said there, is, there will be definitely cues to rule out organicity or if that gives you coo, um, clues go for investigations the, uh, then comes mental status examination where we talk about like rapo appearance and behavior please do not uh, miss appearance and behavior anybody who looks sad must be sad kind of a thing at least in psychiatry mm. So, um, and look for, uh, then comes like mood, thought, higher cognitive functions. And when the higher cognitive function, if somebody is disoriented to time, place and person, that is also another clue that he might be having some organic illnesses. Because in uh, psychiatric illnesses, even if somebody is depressed, he won't be disoriented to time, place and person. Uh, then comes insight, level of insight, level of awareness about the illness. Then comes diagnosis. Diagnosis can be a concluding diagnosis or maybe can differentials. Always keep the hierarchy in mind like organicity, psychotic illnesses, mood disorder, anxiety disorder, malingering. Then comes investigation to rule out if you have some clue cues to rule out an organic disorder. Then comes come therapy. Therapy will be psychoeducation, educating the family member, patients about the illness, about the medication, prognosis, giving them, giving them choices. Then the medication part, pharmacotherapy, there will be, there are better medications these days available. With You can choose medicine according to the patient, you have to, you have to customize the medication because somebody might be ill with some other comorbid psychiatric illness or comorbid physical illness. Then go for therapy, it is very important. Therapy especially in case of geriatric population, he will be having most often than not, he will be having many other problems. Like he might be actually poor social support, he is financially poor. He is either he will be divorced, separated or one of the major life event like just uh, retired or uh, somebody in his family has died, his partner has died, those kind of things. And the also bad part about this geriatric population is that they respond <coughs> poorly to medication. The prognosis is not that good as kind of aged uh, young population. This last thing not but not least, this is very important because geriatric population is going to be there. And over by 2030, around 20 percent of the people of our country will be geriatric, that is over age of 65, they are going to live long time. So the um, uh, coping strategies and uh, taking or treating the caregiver, that is very important, treating the family members who take care of these patients is very important. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Sanjay for nicely uh, summarizing and explaining all the details. Thank you sir. Thanking all. Thank you. Thank you.